Cool. So um, let me begin. So very quickly, a background about myself. Uh, so my career, we're in 2022 and you know time flies. So my career spans now 22 years. Uh, the journey started in some of these brands that I mentioned here. <coughs> I've had a stint with, with all of them. Um, and it so happened that, you know, when I started working, it, it, it happened accidentally. I used to be a musician in my previous life. Uh, you know, I used to do concerts across the country. Uh, you know, I was a lead vocalist and a guitar player for a, for a band. And while I was doing that, I realized that, and this is, you know, back in the day, uh, 98, 99. Uh, and I realized that, you know, playing guitar and, and, and traveling was an expensive hobby. And I needed, I needed somehow to, to support this hobby. Or when you are young, you don't have to pay for your parents. You will win, you will win, you So with that thought, uh, you know, uh, the, I, was, I was introduced to make my trip. And one fine day I went there, um, you know, met the, met the co-founder, his name is Keir Joshi. He used to have long hair and, you know, we, we chatted exactly for seven minutes. And then I was offered a job. I had no clue about what travel is, what Make My Trip was intending to build. But he knew that, you know, I'm going to get paid uh, for, you know, the eight hour, nine hour job that I will do. So that's how the journey started. And um, my first job at Make My Trip was a training uh, classic. Uh, and then subsequently I ended up, you know, spending 11 years at Make My Trip. And in that journey of 11 years, uh, you know, I learned a lot. Uh, you know, I'm thankful that I was surrounded by, you know, some stalwarts, not only of the industry, but in general, people who had more experience. And I realized that um, over the course of time, I realized that, you know, sales as a function was always the most sought after commodity or, you know, let's say uh, people, you know, people who were great sellers, they were always not only rewarded, but they were, you know, they were always in front of everyone. Everyone knew about them. Uh, you know, everyone was talking about them. Some of those names were taken in, 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 in offsites, in board meetings, in town hall meetings. And that sort of, you know, made me feel uh, that pe people who are in sales, they have a sense of entitlement you know, almost, uh, it was encouraging. And I thought, Ki, agar, agar aisa hai, main kyun kar sakta? because mujhe travel aata nahi tha. But, but thankfully, you know, when we started, uh, and I was young, you know, there was so much support, so much learning. Uh, and, and, and that's how, you know, the career began. I mean, I was selling airline tickets to customers on the phone. Uh, and then over a period of 11 years, I ended up leading one of the largest business vertical for make my trip, which was a flights business. Um, <clears throat> subsequently after the IPO, uh, I moved to a brand called Airbnb. I was the India CEO led, uh, you know, some countries in Asia, uh, and over there. You know, so by the way, make my trip was largely a B2C brand business to consumer as most of you may, uh, may know. So make my trip didn't own any product, so to say, but product, kya tha? Uh, product, the hotels product, tha. actually product, a ek, ek website thi, uh, to be fair. Uh, that was the only IP that Make My Trip had. But anything other than that was not owned by Make My Trip. Uh, there was an airline ticket, which was a commodity. There was a hotel, which was again a commodity. <coughs> and then there were packages and so on and so forth. Typical classic, uh, you know, travel agent model. But I think what was different back in the day was that during those days, it was, it was the consumer, uh, you know, who was dependent on the offline travel agent. So wo jo bhi bolta tha, wo travel agent, wo consumer maan leta tha, aur wo khareed leta tha. And then suddenly, suddenly after the emergence of some of these OTAs, the power started shifting to the consumer. And then the consumer could take his or her own decision ki mujhe khareedna kya hai. So anyways, long story short, so that was a B2C brand, uh, you know, uh, you know, by far the largest brand in the country. And then Airbnb uh, in 2011, post IPO of Make Matter, I joined Airbnb, led that. Uh, you know, company. And while, while I was at Make My Trip, I also did uh, some bit of franchisee slash channel sales. So that's, that's termed as B2B. And we'll talk about these uh, in detail. Uh, then Airbnb happened, which was uh, more around C2C, uh, which is a marketplace. Consumer to consumer means a consumer, dusre consumer ko kuch bech hai, which is a classic uh, Airbnb uh, or let's say an Etsy or uh, sort of a model uh, where one consumer is, has created something or has something to offer. And the other consumer on the other side is, is actually buying. <coughs> and you happen to be the facilitator. 
फिर उसके बाद एक स्टार्टअप करा वो यू नो आई सोल्ड दैट कंपनी देन आई ज्वाइन हैंड्स विद रितेश यू नो बिल्ड वन ऑफ देयर लार्जेस्ट बिजनेसेस व्हिच इज वेकेशन रेंटल बिजनेस आई मैरिड द कांसेप्ट ऑफ एयरबीएनबी व्हिच वाज यू नो ऑफलाइन सॉरी नॉट ऑफलाइन बट व्हिच वाज अराउंड होम्स डिफरेंट सप्लाई कंपेयर्ड टू होटल्स एंड देन आई मैरिड द कांसेप्ट ऑफ ओयो व्हिच वाज मोर अबाउट प्रेडिक्टेबल एक्सपीरियंस यू नो व्हिच वाज अबाउट की भाई सात सौ रुपए हजार रुपए में तुम्हें ये पांच चीजें मिलेंगी एयर कंडीशनिंग एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा एयर कंडीशनिंग इंटरनेट ब्रेकफास्ट हाइजीनिक टॉयलेट्स यू नो एंड आई मैरिड दैट कॉन्सेप्ट एंड दैट बिकेम फेयरली लार्ज देन यात्रा हैपन टू मी वेयर माय रूल वाज लार्जली टू डू एंटरप्राइज सेल्स विच इज सो यात्रा हैड अस प्रोडक्ट यू नो अ प्रोडक्ट विच वॉज फॉर एंटरप्राइज कस्टमर्स यू नो कॉपरेट कस्टमर्स एज वी कॉल देम एंड इट वॉज अ प्रोडक्ट दैट वॉज बिल्ट बाय yatra uh, you know an expense management tool uh, so i got an exposure of uh, enterprise sales over there along with saas because saas uh, play thi and we were calling it tas which is travel as a service and then last my last venture prior to doing what i'm doing was uh, you know i i i dabbled with uh, co-working spaces uh, and you know currently and i you know i was a co-founder and uh, ceo there um and over there uh, in that in that brand which is inq space uh, we are currently the largest number 2 uh, tier 2 tier 3 service provider across the country so that's been my journey and i and i over this journey i realized that eventually what is it that people are selling it's actually either a product it's a service or it's both um and and nothing else beyond product and service is nothing else so that sort of made me realize that agar ye sir product and services hai to what is it that drives people to to sort of sell and become successful with it because the reality is that everyone is a seller you know we all are selling something to each other at all given points in time we don't we don't necessarily rely uh, realize it but hum bech to rahe hote hain i mean today if you know the conversation that i'm having with you i'm telling you things what am what am i what am i doing here i'm actually selling you a story i'm selling you a dream i'm telling you what i have done and hopefully if if you like it then you will you will be sold and you will try and implement some of these things that i that i'm going to share with you so that that drove that drives me to the other thing which is you know uh, you know what are the several stages of some of these businesses uh, that that eventually take us to the right so if you if you look at the the slide you will see on the left side are brands Uh, you know what they do is in the center that we spoke about and what are some of those things that we that we sort of gather over a period of time and which leads us to something which i call as rnr and rnr is nothing but reward and recognition so it starts with training and again like i said i'm, I'm happy to share my story so jab maine make my trip join kari thi guys to mujhe of course travel ke, and i'm i'm going to restrict my talk my chat today around these brands because this is what i've done uh, largely and i you know i can talk in in length about every company that i've been associated with but one common thread was some of these things that are written towards the right hand side of the screen so whenever you whenever you you start a fresh you know you have to be taught you have to be taught not necessarily aapko skills bechni hoti hain aapko skills nahi bechi jati aapko sikhaya jata hai ki what is it that you need to do what is it that you need to sell and when i say when i say sales uh, you know it's it's a very relationship driven uh, uh, asset to any organization so i have not come across any seller or you know any seller in my life who is just you know hardcore product bech rahe ho ki bhai aapko ek washing machine bechne hai ya aapko ek consumer phone bechna hai agar us insaan ko ek ek achhi training shuru mein nahi mili hogi to wo kabhi sales nahi kar sakta so one of the most important thing which i have realized over a period of time is that whatever you may be selling you not only need to know about that particular service or product that you are selling but you also need to be very very clear as to what are some of these other things that are available in the market out there agar aapko sirf apne bare mein pata hai aap kya bech rahe ho aur aap sirf us objective aur slash uddeshya se customer ke paas jate ho ki bhai मेरे को आपको ये बेचना है बिकॉज मेरे पास यही है तो आप कभी भी लाइफ में एक अच्छे सेलर नहीं बन पाओगे आप सेल्स कर लोगे लेकिन आपको कभी भी ना कस्टमर वापस आकर के नहीं बोलेगा कि भाई आई ओनली वांट टू टॉक टू दिस पर्सन बिकॉज 
you know, this person uh, not only sold me the, the solution, but this person was able to guide me and tell me that this is not this is And a lot of times what happens is that you, you may not have the, the right solution. You may not have the right product. But you will be able to sell the consumer what you want to sell the consumer if you just listen to the consumer very patiently. So some of those things that I, you know, while, while I'm at the topic, uh, you know, some of these things that are, that are written here. So, you know, you start with training, training, ke baad kya hota hai? typical classic assessment. Hota hai. So either your trainer or your supervisor or your boss will assess whether you've been able to learn some of the things that they have been trying to, uh, trying to teach you. And then subsequently, you know, you get on the job, uh, whether you're experienced or you're not experienced. Like I, you know, when I started in QSpace, I was 18 years into the industry. But I had no clue about what co-working spaces are all about. I travel some But in that regard, for about a month to 40 days, I was learning on the job. Because I, I had my peers, I had my colleagues, I had my subordinates who had more experience in selling office spaces than what I had. And hence, it was important for me to be a good listener. So sales as a, as a function starts with one core quality, which is listening. If you don't listen, whether it is your trainer, whether it is your customer, whether it is your boss, whether it is anyone else, if you don't listen, you will not learn. And I, you know, if, if someone had to tell me that, you know, what are some of those core top qualities that, that makes a great seller? I think one of the biggest core quality is for your ability to listen. Sometimes it's like that we, you know, we are so confident of we know it all. And we end up coming to a solution without listening to what the consumer is seeking for or, or asking for. And I think that that's the biggest mistake that we do. And it's important that we, ho sakta hai, ho sakta hai, mere ko us consumer ki baat ya kisi ki baat sunke do minute mein samjhna aaye ki isko solution kya chahiye. Lekin agar aapne baat nahi suni, to ho sakta hai ki aap <coughs> solution hai, lekin aap ek galat pitch kar do customer. So it's important to, to, to listen and learn. And, and hence the concept of more learning and constant learning comes because sales is, is, is similar to being a doctor in my view, you know, or a lawyer in my view, because while, you know, they are regarded as professionals and for some reason, because, you know, the whole system is built in a way where salespeople are, are considered generalists and they're not considered specialists, which I think is wrong because uh, anyone who wants to be effective with sales has to constantly learn. And if the learning stops at any given point in time, that will be the end or the decline of your career. And of course, uh, no one wants that. And hence, it's important that we, that we keep ourselves abreast to change. We make sure that we are always looking out, learning, um, learning from others, learning from customers. I think some of the best learnings that I've, at least I've had over the course of time is actually come from consumers because, you know, and I think when you become a entrenched in a sales machinery, a sales system, you know everything that you know in your company. आप क्या बिल्ड कर रहे हो आप क्या बेच रहे हो क्या सर्विसेज हैं आपके पास आपने क्या चीज नहीं इनोवेट कर रही है लेकिन काफी बार लोगों की मायोपिक थिंकिंग की वजह से होता है क्या है दैट वी वी टेंड टू नॉट लुक आउटसाइड एंड सी व्हाट इज गोइंग ऑन समटाइम्स यू नो थिंग्स आर हैपनिंग इन आवर कंट्री समटाइम्स थिंग्स आर हैपनिंग अराउंड अस बट समटाइम्स थिंग्स आर हैपनिंग इन प्लेसेस व्हिच कुड बी टोटली अनरिलेटेड बट दे will make an impact to our business. And a classic example, I'm sure you must have heard of this, uh, was the example of uh, iPhone, right? When smartphones came, what happened to, you know, people who were, who were using, uh, you know, uh, private music, like, you know, uh, music systems, like, what do they say? I don't remember, right? Like PDAs, hote the shayad, right? Just music load, kar do, um, Walkman. Hote the. So Walkman died overnight. Cameras, right? Jo, Kodak Ekerke company thi, that died overnight after smartphones came because these guys all these years did not realize that competition will come and hit them from somewhere 
which is totally unrelated. So someone who was building a smartphone suddenly killed two other industries, which they had no clue about. One was, like I said, music, jo, you know, small music players. And the other was, was cameras. And today, you know, look at the quality of phones that are out there. So the point being that I think being aware is super critical. And, and being aware, it's not possible that, you know, you will be able to read up everything on your own. And hence, uh, you know, it's important that you listen to your customers because your customers will tell you of things that you may not know of. And while you're at it, it is also very important that you take notes, you write, uh, you quiz them and, and, you know, don't feel ashamed. You should not feel, um, you know, silly that the customer is telling you something which you're not aware of. It's absolutely fine to ask questions and, and accept that, oh, really, I did not know of this. What by doing so, what happens is that you're, you're only gaining trust of the customer because agar aapne customer ko koshish kari ki bola ki bhai i know it all and us customer ko aapke competitor ke product ya kisi aur product jo aapse related ho uske bare mein zyada pata hoga so it will take him or her 2 minutes to figure out that he is talking to the wrong person and i think you know when you talk about sales conversion funnels uh, you will realize that a lot of times people tend to lose a sale because because of a few reasons which are like a question mark ki kyun sale kyun lose ho gayi itna kuch karne ke baad wo typically kyun hota hai because customer ko end mein lagta hai ki wo ek galat insaan ke sath baat kar raha hai ya to us insaan ko jo usko koi cheez bechne ki koshish kar raha hai usko apne product ke bare mein ya customer ki problem ke bare mein zyada nahi pata ya usne customer ki baat nahi suni ya usko har ek cheez ke liye approval lena padta hai you know classic problem that i've seen and hence again constant learning is never ever से कि मुझे आता है हर एक बात पे इट्स इंपॉर्टेंट इट्स वेरी क्रिटिकल टू से ओ ओके आई डोंट नो ऑफ दिस बट गेस वॉट आई एम टेकिंग नोट्स लेट मी चेक कम बैक टू यू एंड गिव अ टाइम लाइन टू द कंज्यूमर आई मीन दीज आर थिंग्स आई एम टेलिंग यू विच यू नो यूल बी एबल टू होपफुली सी दिस रिकॉर्डिंग लेटर आई वॉन्ट टू कीप इट इंटरक्टिव टूडे एंड शेयर माई एक्सपीरियंस बिकॉज आई थिंक सम ऑफ दीज थिंग्स गेट लॉस्ट in presentation sometimes so when you when you make a commitment to a customer uh, or to anyone that look give me a day's time and i will call you aur agar aaj aapne 1 baje din mein usko commit kara hai aur bola hai ki i will call you in 24 hours then today you have you know advantages of using a calendar calendar is one of the most effective tool sales people use you know in some companies you may have very advanced systems jahan pe aapko auto alerts aa jayenge reminders aa jayenge but a lot of us are not as fortunate to be you know working in companies who can afford these sophisticated tools but hum sabke paas ye phone hota hai this phone itself is very very powerful isme ek feature hota hai jisko bolte hain calendar aur us calendar ke andar hota hai reminders what is more critical to a customer is not the solution that he is seeking for but what becomes more critical is for him to hear back from you on the time that you have committed so agar aapne bola hai sir i will come back to you in 24 hours in 24 hours it is also a very high likelihood ki aapko us problem ka solution na mila ho but that's okay what you need to do is you just need to pick up the phone call and tell the tell the customer i'm still working on it i have not been able to get answer but i assure you that i will come back to you take more time बट अगर आपने 24 घंटा कमिट करके उसको 36 घंटे या 48 घंटे तक फोन नहीं करा कंसिडर द सेल टू बी अ डेड लीड बिकॉज द कस्टमर हैज लॉस्ट ट्रस्ट इन यू ट्रस्ट इज पर मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट अंडर रेटेड एसेट दैट गेट्स बिल्ट बिटवीन अ कस्टमर एंड अ सेलर यू विल नेवर बी एबल टू सेल एनी थिंग टू एनी वन अनलेस यू नॉट बीन एबल टू बिल्ड ट्रस्ट with that customer and and what i'm saying is is all sub parts of learning more learning and and constant learning so sorry can i does anyone have a question because i can could just keep going on but i'll probably like to pause here and and assess if someone uh, wants has any question so i have just one question over here as you rightly mentioned that uh, uh, for instance you have to share a timeline to a client 
yeah. what if what if there's an instance where and you mention a timeline for an example uh, you get an approval you talk to a client the client wants a discount you get an approval from your manager yeah but the yeah. manager gives you a timeline that okay the sale has to close by this saturday or next saturday uh, or you can say sunday max and you convey the same to your client the client says okay and then still the sale doesn't get closed by that time meanwhile just for the follow up you reach out to a client on monday trying to understand that why didn't the sale go by hmm. and the client says that okay i have some money concern issues then again you uh, they they ask them again if you could just help me with a little more discount you do you you again follow up with you can say your manager get a little more discount and again share the timeline hmm. and this time what you do is that you know the client is just playing so for an instance you say that okay this is the final discount i can give if you're interested let me know and uh, you don't get any response from your client itself then after you can say a week or so they again respond back to you stating that i am having some trouble while deploying the bot or you can say deploying the solution yeah and now what can uh, like now what 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 to do ahead and you assess them completely out meanwhile you ask them like ma'am i also are you interested so what you basically have to do in order to close such type of sale because if you see most of the indian client uh, do this hmm. like this is my experience with from my internships when most of my indian clients are at uh, this aspect stuff very few of them who commit and they are com- coming on board so if you could just put some light over here sure can i get your name my name is brendan okay brendan hi so okay brendan i think what you've done is you've asked some some very important questions but within your questions i could read multiple questions so let me start by attacking each one of them uh, one by one so one question that you asked was around discounting right where a customer uh, and 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 before i jump into solving for the problem let me tell you that no customer comes because he or she has time to do window shopping okay a customer comes to us because they have a need uh, it may be the case that the customer is planning to buy a certain thing over a period of time and hence they could be you know trying to figure out ki agar mujhe ye cheez khareedni hai whether it is a product whatever it may be let me assess how much would it cost so the the you know it, that lead time could be a month that lead time could be 6 months depending on the kind of product that you're buying i mean if you're buying a house for example you know the research of you you will not go out there tomorrow and say ki mujhe ghar khareedna hai and in one week you will close close the transaction unless you know it is a very important like it is a, it is a die hard need for you but you so depending on what product you are selling it will always have a lead time and consumers will come and they will do some window shopping number one number two i think what is also very important uh, is uh, which you said which you asked around hard sale and pressure from the boss so we all had bosses uh, we become bosses and i understand that pressures are there and you need to close as a seller but i think if i was you what i would very very clearly do uh, is first of all do what is right for the customer the moment you try and and hard sell you may end up selling something to a customer one, once but i can almost promise you that that customer will never ever come back to you uh, because that customer would have realized that is bande ne mereko galat cheez bechi ya zyada mehangi bechi sales remember sales is is something that you will do lifelong right throughout your career never ever do something which is wrong only because you need to please your boss and why i know it's a very cliche thing or it's a right thing to say uh, but believe you me if you follow this and you you go back to your boss and you tell him or her that i know i have a sales target but i'm very close to this transaction of course आप ये नहीं कर सकते दैट यू नो मंथ आफ्टर मंथ यू नो बिकॉज टुडे एवरी लीड गेट्स लॉक्ड सो योर बॉस विल कम बैक टू एंड से यू बीन वर्किंग ऑन दिस फॉर द लास्ट ट्वेंटी डेज व्हाट हैज हैपेंड सो एट सम पॉइंट इन टाइम विद एक्सपीरियंस यू विल फिगर आउट दैट दिस कस्टमर इज नॉट अ डेड लीड ही और शी वाज विंडो शॉपिंग बट आई नीड टू कीप इट अंडर माय फॉलो अप बिकॉज दे मे हैव अ नीड ऑफ बाइंग आफ्टर 2 3 मंथ्स एंड आई विल गिव यू अ क्लासिक एग्जांपल टुडे यू नो आई 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 बिल्ट अ न्यू हाउस एंड देयर वाज समथिंग दैट आई वांटेड टू डू ऑन वन ऑफ द वॉल्स Uh, which which i mean i i just didn't have the time and i've been thinking about it for the last 4 months uh, and this guy who was in touch with me he would text me every 15 20 days and i kept telling him until until yesterday that boss abhi mere paas time nahi i'm very busy 
only last night he texted me and he said sir have you thought about this and i it just struck me that oh god this was something that i had forgotten but i have to do and i have now given that guy to come and meet me tomorrow the point that i'm coming to is that once someone comes to you with a need they will eventually that lead will get will get convert like it will convert at some point in time you just can't dictate and force your customer to close today or close tomorrow because you have a pressure uh, over, over over your head that being said one important thing that you should also remember is that if you are working under some you know strict targets which all of us do then it's important to keep your top of the funnel activity very very active what does that mean it means that the more leads you work on so it's like funnel hota hai na the more comes usi ke proportion mein you will get so if you're converting at 5% hypothetically then if you get 20 leads then you will convert one if you get 100 leads you will convert 10 and eventually it is about having to be having to be able to increase your lead and active conversion funnel on the top which will result into uh, you know your boss is becoming happy and you you gaining more experience brandon have i been able to answer your question yes thank you very much mohit uh, just wanted uh, since you mentioned about the sales funnel what if <clears throat> because again sales is of different aspect like on uh, in how uh, like inbound sales and outbound sales right yeah. uh, so the what uh, what would you suggest if i'm just focusing on outbound because inbound you can have a conversion rate of 50, you can say uh, the conversion yeah, can take I, the cycle i hear you, i hear you. so let me so i'll answer that question sorry i didn't hear you but i know what you and i'm also being very mindful of the time and hence i, I stopped you so see there's a difference between inbound and outbound right inbound is a classic customer has a need and the customer has called you your ability to convert will be probably be a be better because the customer has come with the intent of buying with outbound leads uh, you know this lead could be coming from whichever source you don't know the you know it could be an online lead it could be an offline lead it could be a lead that you may have bought uh, or someone may have bought so uh, and you know classic we get so many calls koi insurance bech raha hota hai koi credit card bech raha hota hai koi kuch bech raha hota hai the beauty about outbound uh, if i was to differentiate is that you have to be patient and you you cannot feel dejected rejected and get personal if the customer hangs up on you number one and if the customer is aggressive because you know the poor guy gets 50 calls a day so don't take don't get disheartened about it right what is important it's something that that comes again with experience and it's not easy to uh, uh, to sort of learn but every new outbound call needs to be treated as if there is no tomorrow and this is the first call i'm doing for the day because the person who is going to answer your call on the other side is potentially talking you talking to you imagine that that person is going to talk to you for the first and last time and then it becomes even more critical for you to make it your best call so if you need to take a break of 30 seconds be- between any calls or 1 minute or 2 minute take a break think and then do another call if you do this your customer who's on the other side will almost be able to see you smile and and will be able to give you 30 40 seconds one of the few things again you know some people may have told you that this is a wrong thing to do i ex- so you know asking someone is this the right time to talk today is in sales is said to be the wrong question to be asked because the moment you say is this the right time to talk what if the guy says no it's not the right time to talk and your your lead will go cold so there are other creative ways than saying is it a right time to talk although it's considered polite but you may just ask uh, hi don't need to int- i don't my name is this don't need to waste your time do you have a need of this i'm calling because of this if if you start your conversation with a slight um quote and quote aggression by letting the customer know that look your time is as important as the other person's time and you value it then the outcome could be different than saying or then asking that do you do you have time and can i talk to you so outbound needs to be dealt with with a very different um style of selling compared to inbound got it thank you mohit no worries okay so i um, before before i sort of take any other question i just want to talk about one thing that 
that is very very important in my view so see all of this you guys understand the slide so i i want to come to the next slide which i think is more important and this is where you will see another brand name over in the end so i think what happens and you know the the objective of me getting together with you guys today was to also tell you that what happens in this journey of sales so over the years you start selling uh, from a sales executive you may become an assistant man i mean just talking about designations then a sales leader then maybe a, a team leader and then a manager and then an avp and a vp and so on and so forth uh, but what you're gaining over the years is actually will eventually lead to some of these three things that i've mentioned towards the end uh, which is highlighted in gray so the the ones that are on top are common everyone does this we start our career we most of most of the people end up finishing their career before the gray line starts but these three things that are mentioned in the end are actually different these are the things that will that you need to get trained you need to work towards which will differentiate between you and someone who is more effective someone who's less effective than you so what is supplier sales slash innovation slash c2s so that's con consumer to supply what does this mean i'll give you an example so if you are someone who has followed some of the principles that i spoke about around listening about being aware about doing market intelligence figuring about your competition then you are someone who's obviously constantly thinking about your customer if you are able to think around the needs of the customer then over a period of time with more experience you will start figuring out that you know the need of the customer probably something else but today what i am offering him or her does not satisfy his need or her need then what do you do because you are not the owner of the end product then what do you do the answer lies that you because you are someone who's in control of sales you are someone who's talking more frequently to the consumer then it becomes your responsibility to go back to the supplier or the product product team or in 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 someone else's case it could be engineering team in someone else's could it could be a manufacturing uh, outfit unless you don't go and tell them that look i want you guys to build this because i think because of the data that i've studied my consumer is wanting this and we don't have it and no one else has has it which is around innovation and that comes by doing everything that i spoke about in the previous slide so that's one second thing is that once you're able to let's say convince your product teams and uh, let's say anyone else who needs to be convinced the other is stakeholders sales and internal stakeholder management what does that mean uh, if you're not you know at the helm uh, if you're not the ceo or the cfo or the coo it almost means that until you're not there or even if you're there you will need to then convince your board so we'll leave that for some other day but until you're not there you will almost need to go to through this process of approvals and seeking approvals so that also you're not doing anything but you're selling it to your management you're making a point and you're proving them with some data that look i am i have i am convinced that this is going to work and hence i am willing to put my neck on the line that this will work and how does that happen again that happens by doing some of the other things that we spoke in the previous slide which is around talking to your customers which is about you know knowing about your competition being aware right and being a good listener if you're able to do all of those combined it will lead to you having to you you will be able to create something you will be able to build something it will be new and then eventually if you get approval of your management and you're able to do that then there will be credibility in the system and if that does if that thing does well then you will become a star right i mean in in these many ways uh, you will become a star and then that leads to something else which is around trust sales i mean i i just call it trust sales uh, it means that if you have constantly or periodically proved to the outside world or the inside inside world that whenever you have come up with an idea or, or whenever you have uh, you know suggested something that has almost every time worked then in the future your journey will become much easier because the moment you come up with an idea or the moment you suggest something which is around a product or an innovation consider it consider it to be approved and consider it to be doing well that does not mean that you will not fail that does not mean that you should be you know worried about failure but it almost means that your ability to succeed will become much easier 
so in the end what i want to talk about or what i want to talk touch upon is the most important aspect which is i so in the end it's not that you are selling a product or a services what you're doing is everything is for your own self everything that i did for all of these companies was not something that i did for them it was something that i was doing it for my own self because that gave me kick that made me feel special that made me feel empowered so if you are if you decide to build a career uh, in the sales organization then start thinking about yourself think internally if you are able to think internally you will be able to do, do the right thing for the customer and for the company and for your own self and lastly i think the other thing that i want to tell you that i learned very early in my career is when you're selling you should sell what you want to sell and not what the customer wants to buy i'll repeat you should always sell what you want to sell and not what the customer wants to buy what does this mean it means that the customer has come to you because the customer not necessarily all the time knows what he or she needs to buy it is up to you to decide what is right for the customer and hence if you are able to sell what you want to sell then the concept of revenue the concept of gross profit margins will never come in the picture because if you are able to literally dictate i hate the word i hate to use the word dictate but if you are able to almost influence and dictate to the customer that look this is the right product this is the right thing for you then you will make so much more money for yourself and for the company that you work for the customer will also be happy the stakeholders will be happy and you will make more money in the end and you'll you will taste success i want to be mindful of the time so let very quickly on the last slide okay so this leads to the last slide what makes a good leader uh, and what is it uh, that will that will take you here and some of these you know adjectives that i have written you know you can read them but unless you don't feel them unless you don't unless you cannot able to relate to them then that i will never be you so these are things that i have learned and i want you to experience this and all of these written in the center you know uh, are things that people will look to to you for you to become successful so unless and what is the difference between a generalist and a specialist so do you want to be a generalist do you want to be a specialist classic i think sellers are not generalists the world thinks that we are generalists but i don't think so it is the case of being a generalist because it's a task it's a job which is special in, in nature you cannot expect everyone to be a good seller because it's a specialization that you do over a period of time and over years if you've sold something and hence i am a big believer that sales is a specialized function and not a general function uh and if you're a good seller then not only will your customer depend and rely on you your management your company your teams will also have the same feeling because they will see some like they will look at you as someone who's not only reliable and dependable but but you're also accountable and accountability comes to that first thing that i spoke about around meeting your promises and commitments so if you don't meet that promise whether it is to your boss or whether it is to you to your customer you will never be able to become an effective leader in the sales org or any other org within the company um you know creative visionary etc all of that will come with time the the other important thing is you know language don't ever think that you know you need to be a very good uh you know you need to be ex- fluent in english and hence you will be an effective leader no that's not the case but you need to be a good orator unless agar aap apni baat saaf shabdon mein kisi ko spasht nahi kar paoge to aap kabhi bhi kuch bhi nahi bech paoge so whatever language you are comfortable with whether it is english whether it is hindi whether it is english become a master of that do not shy away if you if you're not someone who excels with a with certain language because your customer is not come to you because he's interested in your in the quality of your english or hindi for that matter that customer has come to you because he believes or she believes that you are someone who will be able to give him the right uh solution and hence effective communication will help both for your customers and internally and that leads to you being authentic and being aware so agar aap authentic hoge to fir aapki bhasha aapki body language uh you know what you do at work outside of work will reflect 
lastly, be a little flexible and constant, keep learning. Because if you're not flexible and you constantly always say, Ki mujhe sab kuch aata hai, then that's the end of the story. So unless you're not flexible, unless you're not willing to learn and listen, it will be the end of the story. So I'll pause there, I'll stop there. Um, and I'm happy to take uh, you know, any questions uh, that, that you guys may have. Thank you very much, Mohit, uh, for such uh, insightful information. Mohit, uh, meanwhile, just since I've just uh, seen the companies that you have touched base or, or you can say a big, big companies, yeah, what would yeah. you uh, suggest? You can say a fresher who is, you can say, just started his career into sales for which uh, I'll, I'll take my example. When I worked as an intern for a company for inbound sales, and now I am working for a second internship in a company which is majorly focusing on outbound sales. So the nature where I'm coming from that inbound to converting into an outbound, what what are you can say, what are the things that you could assist me with over here if you put some lights? Yeah, so I think the first and foremost thing, uh, which is extremely important for you to be effective, never be afraid and shy of asking questions. You know, whether you're asking it to your customer or whether you're asking it to your boss internally, asking questions, the question may be wrong or right. I don't decide whether it's a right question or a wrong question. Never hesitate to ask the question. That's a very, very important thing. So unless you don't ask, you will not learn. If you don't understand, there is no harm in asking that question again and again internally until you don't get full clarity. There, there should be no shame. So if you have to be someone who needs to be effective and scale up in life in any of these companies, or let's say, you know, small to large companies, then it's important that you should be shameless. I hate, you know, shameless in a good way where there is, there should be no, no shame in asking any question. Keep asking that question. And if you've got it right once, then you practice on it. And again, come back with follow-up questions that, hey, you told me this, it sort of worked, but hey, I have follow-up questions because I implemented this, but that led to this. If you do this, just one thing, there will be no stopping. Second thing is never have, never have the fear of failure. And I know these are things that are sounding very big, but if, if let's say you've learned a new concept, but you're scared to try it because it seemed to you that it was a stupid thing, it will never work then that means that you're applying your own judgment on top of something that you've learned from someone and because you're scared ki log hasenge, you will not do it. So don't do that. Never be you know, scared of, of, of trying something. Uh, hoga kya? You will fail. But there is a cost of learning, right? If you fail, you almost then will know that this is not going to work and you will not do it again. But what if that thing would work? And what if you did not try it for the first time and then your next 10, 20, 30, 50, 100 leads got rejected because you did not try it? Does that answer your question? Yes, Mohit. Uh, meanwhile, uh, so so I, what I had done is if you put some little more light on this aspect also. So meanwhile, I had asked my, you can say the people, the co-workers, like what, what should I do in this case? All they said is just increase the pipeline. I do agree increasing the pipeline basically helps, but what is something unique that I could do? Because I will, I'll tell you, so I am basically working for a company which is into chatbot selling. Mm -hmm. So chatbot is quite, uh, you can say there in the market, we have competitors, I agree. So whenever I ask, uh, because it, it is an outbound type of sales, I've asked my uh, colleagues, like what, what else should I do? So all they recommend is just keep on building pipeline. That's all you can do. So apart from this, any more insights that you have that could help me out over here? Yeah, so I think uh, on the pipeline, we'd say if you're, and I've had this classic issue uh, working with, you know, inside sales team as well. Um, there can never be a better pipeline than the pipeline that you will build yourself. And people, if, you know, if you're someone who will only get leads from someone in, you know, in the, in the, in the, in the department, so marketing typically or all sales lead functions are, uh, you know, our, our functions whose job is to go and collect leads. They pay money to collect leads. But I've realized that not those leads, some of them, I mean, are just trash leads. 
what you end up doing and i'm reading a comment uh, on on chat also someone is quite upset about the fact that we may have got his lead and we are you know just bombarding him or her him with with uh, with emails so so this is what happens classic example right where you've got this lead from somewhere the customer has no, like wrong word maybe it's not even a customer the person has nothing to do with you right but you are just going after him because that lead happens to be some you know a lead which is lying in your system you will feel disheartened you will get disheartened but i think what if like what i have done in the past and i'll share it with you was is that over over the course of the day i would take out an hour and i would sit different in a different place and i would just scout for leads online you know back in the day we did not have so much of information available online but today there is you know if you are able to sort of create your own pipeline yourself using creative uh, methods then you will not only be motivated your ability or your conversion will also improve so don't completely start relying because one other thing that you will challenge is i don't have leads what do i do how will i convert and then you know this blame game starts you should not not depend on others for you to become successful because your success lies in your own hand tomorrow if you don't convert you know your marketing team will say that look i had given these many leads these were qualified leads but this person did not do well who will who will pay the price it will be you and not that team does that help got it yes yes definitely thank you mon no worries guys any other questions anybody else has uh hi madhi uh sorry mohit just one last question no worries go ahead and uh so apparently they say that uh, there are two aspects of it people say that sales is a job role that is very difficult or security nahi hai if you could just put little more light on this aspect as well so i think that's a you know this is a statement which will come from people who have not tasted blood and what do i mean by that these are people who are the classic you know jo maine abhi example diya tha na the people who are always screaming and crying oh you know my boss is this my you know the leads that these people give me are all bad um, you know and so on and so forth you will never come across someone uh, someone who's complaining and and will say that ye bahut risky hai ya you know security nahi hai who tasted success and and success is 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 addictive man i mean i i can't tell you but it's very addictive once if you it's like it's like the concept of mathematics you know it's it used to be one of those subjects jisse sabko dar lagta tha aur shayad aaj bhi lagta hai but the reality is that the math you will only excel at if you start practicing it the more you practice the better you will become and the beauty about math and sales is that they both are common and the moment you crack math it will be one subject that you will start loving so sales is very like it's very similar and hence i keep saying that it's a very specialized job and not a general job so don't be don't worry about people who say that it's koi security nahi hai ye nahi hai wo nahi it's all nonsense you can quote me on this it's nonsense otherwise sellers would have not been the most rewarded people in any organization sales is a function which people love you know it's a revenue function it's not a cost function sellers are the people who sometimes make 10 times 20 times of their take home salary so don't worry about people who are you know who will come and tell you that look ye to bahut insecure agar aap ek se like for example look and I'll, i'll end my chat with that agar covid nahi hua hota right to shay travel band nahi hoti and incidentally i i started grappling with co-working spaces when covid had not hit us but it was a new industry for me and i did it and we we became we were nowhere but we became number one over a period of two years uh, in spite and i'm not taking the credit of that completely because it was a team but the point is that hai to sale hi na hai to concept hi na there is a need supply and demand if you don't know the, about the supply learn about the supply demand will always exist but don't be scared that you will lose a job or don't be scared that it's an insecure job <coughs> excuse me as long as you're producing precious revenue precious money for your company you will be you will always be cherished by the company and you will always be someone who will be rewarded by the company thank you mohit and one last question sorry once again so they say that sales uh, if if you are a good if you want to be a good seller you have to be very good in math 
what would you say in this case uh i i don't think so math so math ek minute mujhe na email address bhi change karna do math i don't think so math is the right uh, word i think uh, you need to be slightly decent with numbers when i say numbers you know you should be able to you know the basic you should be able to subtract and add uh, the least that you could do and the other thing that uh, you could do uh, is uh, be able to figure out what what do you mean by conversion and conversion is just simple you know division right so agar aapko teen char cheeze aati hain which is you know addition subtraction multiplication and division uh, you will be fine unless you know you're someone who's on the data side and doing let's say uh, data modeling where you're doing projections uh, and as you keep growing in the career in the ladder initially the expectation will be from you to build this and one 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 tip that i will give you uh, you know microsoft has this product called excel it's one of the most powerful tools i have learned and i think i have still learned 5% of the capability of the product and as a seller i encourage everyone to learn microsoft excel and when i say microsoft excel i don't necessarily mean that you need to be able to uh, you know write uh, write code on it right uh, uh, but if you know the basics you know uh, how do you do cumulative how do you do sum how do you do i mean it is just you know if you do um, kya bolte hain usko pivot tables so pivot tables agar aap seekh lete ho it is going to be very very helpful and if you can learn pivot tables take a course online there's enough available information out there it is just going to help you look at numbers in a very different different manner and one line that i want to share with you which i learned uh, you know from a data analyst his signature used to be data is like criminals the more you will strangulate them the more they will talk which means that data numbers are so funny in nature that you can present them and you can see them in whichever manner you want to see them and it has nothing to do with maths or stats and it will come with practice so microsoft excel your your go to tool yeah mohit yes sir harmik here uh, thank you very much for sharing your experience and i would add on to it that for a sales guy the most important thing is his incentive and uh, what the kick uh, is there is in getting the order so yeah. when you get the order so it gives you lot of uh, motivation uh, i worked for a company which is into sales of industrial and in I, uh, in my career i have handled uh, industrial p2b b2g uh, as well as b2c also retail also <clears throat> so um, what uh, what what i have seen over the years that um, the though you are earning money uh, you are learning a lot but uh, i have seen very few people who have become the head of the company from the sales side so either uh, it is from uh, marketing uh, or from finance or from so how would you like to say something that being a sales guy how you can lead that company in some time so that is i think uh, uh, an added advantage to all of us uh, because in sales when i have i have uh, uh, earned learned uh, learned and um, have a name also in the market but how to become uh, that is still a question mark because uh, i think you in the beginning uh, said that sales uh, has been treated as a generalist job yeah. but actually it requires lot of uh, efforts vigor self confidence uh, clear communication and uh, the most important is that if you can uh, after trust you can build a credibility inside as well as outside so if you if you can put across excel also very very rightly said that if you want to if you're good at numbers and numbers does not mean that okay maths uh, but if you if you can master tools like excel and maybe adding on to that a bit of ppt also yeah yeah of course because these these days these days uh, uh, it's not only uh, the pure uh, uh, talking so presentation skills are also important so <clears throat> so uh, something on to that okay from uh, what has brought you here now what next sure uh, no i think very valid point and i'm glad that you could share uh, you know a little bit about your background and you know how you've you've reached here so so two parts to that question one 
I think it will be slightly unfair and inaccurate to say that people who who represented sales have not reached the top. Uh, you know, those days are gone where there used to be just one managing director in a company, right? Today, beyond a CEO, CFO, and COO, there are other functions that have emerged. So there is a chief you know, revenue officer, there is a chief growth officer, there is a chief business development officer, and so on and so forth. So I, and some of these people are not necessarily coming from the classic, typical, uh, you know, finance backgrounds, uh, as you said. So that's part one. Part two is that, how do you get there? I think it's, it's a step, it's a step by step process. And like you rightly mentioned, where you said that, look, we have earned not only credibility, wealth, um, respect, uh, but also titles because of sales and I, and how we've earned that is that if you have always, if you're someone who's done the right thing for your company and for the right, for the consumer, it is about repetitive sale, wherever you may be. It is about that trust that you build, uh, not only within the company amongst your peers and teams, but also outside. Uh, right. And all of those, all of those added, like it, it's just not one thing that will take you there. You have to, at some point in time, become someone who becomes a well-rounded person, which comes with experience. And, you know, some of the things that you spoke about, uh, some of the things I spoke about. So it's just not one. It does not take one attribute um, or quality that will make you someone who will become a CXO in the organization, but it has to be a combination of all. Some of those things that I spoke about in my slide, which is this. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree to all of all of these. And you know, honestly, you know, I'm sure you will relate to this. We didn't. We weren't when we started our job or our career. These were things that we knew of, but we had never practiced it because we didn't know how to practice it. But one leads to the other. You know, from a generalist, you become a specialist. Suddenly, because you've tasted success, and I'm reiterating myself, people start coming to you. Ki, oh, how do I solve for this? Yeah, you know how to do this. Then hence, you become slightly dependable. The moment there is dependability, you feel empowered and you feel that, look, people are coming to me and not to my colleague because they think that I know more than them, which makes you more hungry, right? If you are hungry, constantly earning hungry, then you will learn more, not because it is giving you a joy to sort of uh, help your colleagues. It's, it's, it's something that is giving you a kick. And that kick will keep pushing you towards the ladder, like, you know, the top of the ladder. You have to be constantly self-motivated, whether you are doing it for the customer, whether you're doing it for the company, whether you're doing it because you want that appreciation from people around you, it is about you. And hence this whole topic of, of it is all about me. If I can please myself, if I can satisfy myself, if I see that I'm getting all of these, you know, in the Maslow hierarchy theory, if I'm able to see all of these things or able to achieve all of these things one by one, one by one, they keep adding up. Eventually, I will be at the top of the you know, ladder. I may not be the CEO. I may be the CEO. I don't know. But I'll definitely get to the top level. Yeah. And how long you should stick to a company? Uh, no right answer. answer. I mean, I wish I knew. But uh, at least, uh, you know, I've spent 11 and a half years in one company. Uh, Today, things have changed. Uh, and I think my experience tells me that a lot of people today are switching for two reasons. Uh, one reason is that they're just generally very, very good. And they're just so good that they're always not able to just, you know, their hunger is not, not satisfied. Like they're, they're more hungry. They're hungry for more. And hence, they're willing to take bigger challenges because their, their appetite is not consumed by one company. That could be. And this is the second lot. In general, the other lot is people who are, who have figured out that, look, one year, two year work in a company, reach a certain level. And after two years, three years skip, because it will give you two things. One higher pay check and potentially a promotion. But what happens with this first lot? And I can tell you with confidence, they will in 10, 12 years, they will become, you know, senior level executives may not be CXO. Some will become CXOs, uh, but after 12, 13 years, or maybe 14 years, I hate to use this timeline, but after 12, 13 years, they will hit a ceiling. They will hit a ceiling and that ceiling, they will not be able to breach because then the people who are above them will be so good 
that then in that then these people will start you know then the sense of frustration seeks in keep creeps in that oh you know i was able to come from an executive level to a vice president or a senior vice president level in 12 years 13 years in my career and now for the last 7 years i'm stuck at svp so my 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 experience my advice would be that there is no shortcut uh, and hence if you are someone who whose hunger is getting fulfilled at a company there should be no reason for you to move on if you have the appetite and your company can give you more that then that you can chew keep chewing it until you know your bladder or your or your or your liver doesn't expand and because if you become more hungry and your company is not able to give you that then move on does that answer your question uh, uh, a bit of so can i can i call you personally sometime uh, yes th- that's the reason i left my number uh, so i i i have a big career actually um, and uh, yet uh, i feel that uh, a lot is uh, pending sure um uh, uh, so i have already uh, uh, i'm already in the industry for 30 years out of which 25 years in sales oh, wow. um very various, various kind of sales but i would surely um look up to you uh, for your advice um suggestions uh, that how can we do better not only for our i think i lost you there hello uh, hello mohit can i have a question yeah, yeah. seems like mohit i think uh, you're not able to hear him i, I think yeah, maybe 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 we should have him as a speaker sometime because you know the gentleman has 30 years experience i we, I, we all can learn from him i'm sure absolutely absolutely yeah. Sorry, someone else had a question. Yeah, 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 yeah. Moit, can I? Yes, please. Yeah, so Moit, can you give an advice for twenty-five-year-old who is just starting his career in into the sales, like a dynamic? What are the skill sets he need to ac- acquire, as in like a technical skills, as well as functional skills? What do you think? One Excel, you have mentioned it. So yeah. Is there is there any other skills like the 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 person who was talking right now? He was he was he was he was, he was talking about the presentation skills. These are the two technical skills for me. And so, what are the functional skills which I need to acquire more? See, I think when it comes to technical skills, you know, it depends on what industry, what you know, what is it that you are selling at the end of the day. I mean, if it's if it's a SaaS business, if it's a tech business, if it's a uh, I don't know, you know, if you're in the industry side, it, then you need to know everything about your product. And like I said initially in my slides, that in order for you to be effective, you need to be able to. uh yes do this constantly right i mean where where was this yeah this uh but if you're asking specifically around functional uh maybe you can elaborate are you like are you talking about more about interpersonal skills are you talking about you know uh, upward management downward like what is could you elaborate the inter- a little personal skills the, the interpret the interpersonal skills or the the way we, the way you communicate uh or or that thing Yeah so I think so, I think in order for someone to be an effective seller it is important for that person to be a likable person you know you can't come across as someone who's who's very arrogant and you know who's who's who's, who's always aggressive always believes in things that he or she knows like unless and all of that comes with under learning I I think uh, unless you're not willing to learn and listen and be open to feedback uh i don't think so you will do well in any of the functions so i think interpersonal skills uh the ability to just just be nice to people i mean you know no one is coming and taking anything from away from you they're only going to give you something in return so if you're willing to have that sort of an attitude that look my 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 role is to learn and if i'm willing to learn then be modest and humble about this learning and it that learning could come from anyone you know it could it could come from your driver it could be someone that, who's a lift man you just need to constantly learn if you're able to see observe pick things from from your surrounding and try and implement them if you can then i think you know you, you will learn and then you will become someone who is who is a likable person but if you're not a likable person you might be very good in your job but you know you just like a you know someone who's very rude it won't work does that help uh, yes yes thanks a lot thanks a lot wait so no worries uh 
So how does it? I have never tried sales. I'm like I'm. I'm more into technical background as of my. As I'm more into the SaaS product thing. As a tech, as a customer success engineer, as a CAC, I do communicate with the people, but in a different background as yeah. of now. So how do you enter into the like? If I want to switch my career into the sales thing, so how do how do change the the mindset, the current mindset that I have? It's about. It's not about selling things. It's it's about convert. Con- communication it's about understanding what my client needs or this is this is what i do in my current job profile but selling is like you 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 putting it and you are like trying to convert them into a, in, into your client or something so how do you create that mindset so i think in, it, sorry please go ahead yeah yeah that's it that's it dekho mera i think bada you know my take on on that is very simple uh, you know unless if you want to be an effective seller if you want to be able to do the right thing for the customer then it is important for you to do two things one you should be in a position to relate to the problem he or she is facing or the need that person has if you are not able to relate then you will not be able to emp- you don't need to sympathize with any customer that's not the thing but you need to empathize because every customer will have some need or the other and you have to remember that maybe for you as an individual that need could be very stupid or very lame or, or very insignificant but for that consumer or for that person who has come to you for a solution that need is the biggest need that person has unless you are not able to relate to what he or she is telling you you will not be able to empathize with them and give them that comfort that they are seeking and i'll give you one anecdotal example a lot of times especially in saas businesses you may have experience and even in tech businesses you know when i say tech business you know classic uh, inside sales uh, or outbound sales where or rather inside sales when uh, you know tech leads tech calls are coming where people are asking you that look this is not working that is not working uh, and give me a solution you may have realized that a lot of times it's actually not a problem that the product has it's the consumer's inability to operate a particular thing it's the inability of the consumer because he or she may not have been trained or may not have been briefed by the service engineer or someone who came and installed a particular you know appliance and hence they have a problem so again that boils down to the same thing to be able to listen how there may be zero problem in the product but if you just give an ear to the customer and the customer say oh, i have this problem i have this and you don't need to i mean you just need to say that okay that i hear you Uh, this is what you need to do the next time you have this problem i would encourage you to go and do abc maybe you have a you know li- like a service menu i think if if you can do that you will be able to you will be able to become a good seller if you can ab- if you're able to relate and empathize cool cool yeah thanks Guys, any other questions uh, you have for Mohit? I I just want to end one thing. You know, I just remembered because I'm sitting in my son's room right now. See, sure. one thing that I've also learned over the years, uh, and you know, I think this this has helped me um, not only in my career but even in my personal life. And you know, what I do outside of work, um, you know, something which is called as a con- the concept of usability, right? What does what does usability mean in 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 general so i'll give you a very anecdotal example which people will be able to relate to so you know everyone you know we all are have our own homes we will have our one bedroom one guest room one drawing room and maybe a third or third or fourth bedroom what i've learned and realized is that unless if you want to relate to some of these problems you can't obviously try everything but uh, unless you don't consume something yourself you will never be able to relate and understand what the consumer is going through and to give you the example of a house um like over the years now i've i've built this habit that whenever we move into a new house uh, i make sure that between me and my wife we end up at least you know spending a few days in each of the bedrooms why do we do that and we end up using all the bathrooms or the washrooms in the house over a period of time why do we do that the reason is very simple because unless i would not go and sleep on that bed unless i don't go and use that guest room shower i will not know what are some of those things that i need in on that or next to that bed or in that bathroom 
uh, which someone else may also need. You know, and I, again, the example that I wanted to give you, like one house a few years ago where we shifted, uh, I, you know, I lied down on the bed, I laid down on the bed and I wanted to charge my phone at night. And I realized after lying down that the plug point was about two and a half feet away from, from the nearest point. And that became an issue in terms of usability. So had I not experienced it, I would have not been able to relate to the problems, let's say my father-in-law or my mother would have faced if they would have come to my house. Am I, you know, it's a very different example from sales, but I'm saying that if you can, if you have the opportunity to use and experience what your consumer or what your guest is going to experience, then it is almost certain that you will be able to relate and give the right solution to the customer. And I'll stop there. I know we have, we've shot here over time. Okay. Thanks so much, Mohit. I think, you know, you sharing your personal experiences and success mantras, we all will use this as an experience to make it better for us by each passing day. And thank you so much, everybody for joining in before we sign off for the day. Uh, just wanted to know, uh, just wanted to brief you. The next webinar is relationship based selling, which is going to be conducted by Rohit, who's director with ey so make sure that you register for next saturday session and in case if you have any questions any information that you need or any insights or any help that we can do to add value please ping us at hello at juloschool.org and thank you everybody for joining on time and you know spending uh, almost about one and a half hours with us on this saturday thank you so much for joining and see you in the next workshop